Welcome back to Thoughts on the Cosmos. Today's episode brings us closer to home as we take a look at our solar system. What is the solar system and how far does it stretch out into space? Our solar system takes its name after the Roman sun god Sol. Many ancient cultures throughout histories regarded the sun as an important part of the local myth, legend, and even religion. In my local language, we call it Matahari, which means eye of day. That does make sense once you think about it. The idea of the sun as a deity or as a god that rode across the sky in a flaming chariot, changing night into day, is common for many ancient cultures from the ancient Egyptians to the Indians to the ancient Chinese. But the sun doesn't just play an important role in human life by supplying the planet with incredible amounts of energy. With its immense gravity, it also plays an important role in holding our solar system together. In the realm of the sun, Sol is king. Our solar system consists of the sun and anything and everything that travels around it. Things like large planets, fiery comets, icy asteroids, and even alien spaceships that get close enough to the sun are attracted to it by the effects of its force of gravity. The reason for this is explained by both Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein, who were both really smart cookies. Newton came first in 1687, saying that objects with mass or anything made of stuff are attracted to every other thing made of stuff by a gravitational force linking them together. This is known as Newton's law of universal gravitation, and it applies to every bit of mass in the entire universe. This gravitational force can be measured by knowing the masses of the objects and the distance between them. For the most part, this is enough to explain the movement of objects like planets in the realm of the sun. All things in our solar system are pulled towards the sun, but since they also have a sideways motion to them, they end up in an orbit path. More than 200 years later, Einstein, the other <gasps> smart cookie we were talking about, further enhanced our understanding of gravity with his general theory of relativity. His idea was that space and time are curved by the very same matter that Newton said were mutually attracted to each other by gravity. The planets of our solar system or any other star system actually move along locally straight paths in valleys of curved space-time created by the much larger parent star. Imagine this towel as the fabric of space-time. Putting a large object on it creates a dent or a curve. <coughs> Morty, Mor Not this time. If another object were to be put in the warped fabric, it would spiral inwards towards the larger object, the same way that the gravity of our sun or other stars pulls at things within its immediate space. Well, at least that's the idea of it. The heavier the mass of the star, the greater the indentation of space-time. The larger the indentation of space-time, the more significant the effects of gravity and the farther out the effects of gravity. So it's just like what Uncle Ben once said, with great mass comes great attraction of gravity. Or was it something about power and responsibility? I don't know, I forget. The sun is big, I mean really big. 99% of the total mass of the solar system big. All the planets, including Jupiter, of which a thousand Earths could fit inside, count for less than 1% of the stuff in our solar system. We are all a humble minority. The actual size of the solar system is defined by the reach of the sun's gravity. How far away an object can orbit the sun because of the space that it indents around it. The sun's gravity can be felt up to a distance of two light years. That's half the distance to the nearest neighbor star, Proxima Centauri. At the farthest reaches of the realm of the sun, there is a shell of cold icy fragments of rock and ice called the Oort Cloud. We would be hard pressed to find anything alive out there so far away from the sun, but the occasional long period comet does come by to visit from there sometimes. We tend to think that the solar system ends at the dwarf planet Pluto, which is what our elementary school teacher would tell us, but it goes out further than that beyond what we may typically call the solar system and the planets that we usually know as planets, exists a world of mysteries that awaits the next curious mind and tomorrow's bravest explorer.
My name is Son of Terra 92, and this has been Thoughts on the Cosmos. Boop. The reason for this is explained by both Isaac Einstein and Albert uh, Isaac Einstein. What the fuck?